Greetings, I'm Pillar Next to Ancient Gladiator, and today with Pillar Loves Tabletop Games, I bring you Arcana from Fantasy Flight Games and Dust Games. In Arcana, you will play as one of the six guilds. Each guild has its own special tiebreaker power for bidding on state cards. State cards provide points. Uh, locations provide five, relics provide one, personalities provide three. And your goal is to win the stakes, get the points, and have the most points at the end to win. At the start of the game, you will have your guild card, and you'll have a deck of relics and personalities and a location. You will shuffle your deck. At the start of the round, we will flip up the state cards for each district that has a face down card. And each player will draw four cards. Starting with whoever has the first player card, that player places a card um, next to any district uh, lined up in a way that uh, they know it's coming from them. And then once everyone has played all four of their cards, or just discarded them, uh, we go to resolve the stakes. Let's say... Yeah, let's say they went this far in this one, and they went one, two, three, four. They play that one, they play that one. Okay. In order to win a state card, you have to um, equal or exceed the value on the yellow number, the highlighted number. So it takes three swords at the very least to win this personality. So they've played five, they've played four. They're both el eligible to win, but they have more swords, so they get to win it. If neither player has enough, then it just stays out there along with the cards that they played. Um, another thing that could happen with uh, certain stakes is, let's see if I can find the card for it. It's called Bribery. See. I don't have quite nearly enough. Like, uh, okay, let's say we're we're in this situation. I have four swords to their four swords. It's a tie. They break ties for um, if the mana chrono is a sword, so they would win that if it gets to the end of the round. Instead. What we can do on our turn is use a relic, apply its value to what we already have there, which would be six, compare it to the primary value, six, and we win it instantly. Every time, and I'll clear that district immediately. Uh, some personalities cannot be bribed. And I believe the new stake card is flipped up immediately. Yes, it is. So eventually the cards you acquire, um, when you need to draw cards and there's not enough, you'll shuffle the discards and um, it'll be your new deck. Where the game will end is... So at the bottom of this deck is supposed to be Ducal Jubilee. When this card is flipped face up, the next round is the last round. And then players will take all their cards that they've got in their deck and their discard pile and still out here needed. And count the ones that are worth points and the most points wins. I am not entirely sure how the... Let me 
Let me double check on the tiebreakers for end of the game. Uh, end of the game. Uh, whoever has the most stake cards. So in other words, the cards you've won out here. Relics are... A, a crap ton of relics might help you with that, but they're also low in points. Yeah. So there's one other thing um, with playing cards to uh, take uh, stakes. Each player has two districts that are closest to them. When playing a card uh, close to uh, your, you know, close to your guild, you have the option to place it face down. Now, if you try to bribe, then you're going to have to turn it face up. But it gives you that uh, power of secrecy that might help in the long run. Yeah, well, once a district runs out of cards, it's done. And once, yeah, and again, once the Jubilee comes up, that's going to trigger the end game. But yeah, you'll just be playing cards, winning stakes, getting new cards cycled in, and using those as well. Um, uh, personalities, once you win them, you've got access to their stats. Their bribe value does nothing. <laughs> uh -huh. If you win a location, then you use location's ability as shown on the bottom. Um, so like this one is choose one district, each player, including you, must discard one of their agents on the district. Um, and then, yeah, locations are just one and done effects that just go to discard. Um, relics um, have a value to win them, but then are only good for their bribe value. So flintlock, you need four swords to get it, but then once you get it, it's worth four for value for bribery. Um, another thing to keep in mind is uh, the fiefdoms. Um, underneath a given name is the name of a fiefdom. So that one is Kraken. Um, that comes into play with uh, the extra modules, which I'll go over here in a minute. So once players are used to the game, one of the things you can do is add in the optional stuff. Um, the first thing you can do is add, uh, the customization cards. You can have more, like, more treasure or more locations or different characters to work with. Um, there's also, um, for adding some extra flavor to your guild is the, uh, the guild leader cards. Um, these get added in once um, players decide to also play with the objectives and the militia. Guild masters have um, guild masters have special abilities that are either usable like once around because you'll you'll know because there's a red symbol and you'll just turn them sideways or there's no symbol and it's always always on effect. There's um, more customizing the game. There's the objectives, which I just talked about. Each player will start with four of these cards and take two of them, keep them a secret. Um, each objective is a district, uh, not district, a fiefdom. So as, as I mentioned before with the state cards, there's uh, fiefdoms. So like for this one, it's Soma. So I would need, if I had the Soma objective, I would need him plus uh, two more from a Soma to achieve it. And it's worth three, uh, six points at the end. It's a way to um, make the end game a little more clear and seeing who's actually going to win. If you, if you manage to have, um, what is it? Where is it? Two objectives of the same name, like two ramparts, 
then you need to get enough cards for both objectives. So I take six cards, but that's that's twelve points right there. Um, there's nine cards for a given fiefdom in the uh, set of stakes, except for one of them, which is like only eight. I forget which, but um, the thing to keep in mind is with uh, out of the one hundred plus stake cards. Little over half are gonna actually be out there, so there's that there's that thing of luck right there. Of maybe you can pull it off, maybe it's impossible. <laughs> Who knows? Um, another optional thing with helping you to win state cards is the militia. So this will be a random thing. Um, on your turn, if you want to play a state card, but you don't like what you have in your hand, you discard a card from hand, and you flip up the top militia and assign it. Um, do you have to decide which district you're assigning it to? Uh, to um, yeah, you assign it to any district, face up or face down. So you get to see what you actually pulled. Soldiers, and there are four soldiers and two captains. Captains are worth a little bit more. But it helps with um, getting past a deficiency uh, in your way. But yeah, once you've added the customization, the objectives, and the militia, then you can uh, make use of the guild masters. But if you're already that far, why not go farther? We have, as a final option, um, for expanding the game is uh, having uh, random events. So at the start of, as part of the setup of the game, the Duke Hall Jubilee will be shuffled into like um, a certain number of cards to be at the bottom section. And then at the start of the round, Beginning each round, the first player moves the top event card to the center of the table. So let's say Dawn of Plague was the event. At the beginning of the round, each player must discard one card of uh, their choice from hand. And so each player only gets three turns. So it's basically going to push the game to an end regardless of what people are bidding on, whether, you know, in the neutral district. Normally it's bidding on the neutral district that helps out the game. This is going to make sure the game ends. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Um, aside from that, there's one little extra option as well. Uh, when you win a state card, you have the option to shove it underneath your guild card <laughs> instead. And you still count it at the end of the game, it's just not um, inflating your deck to more than what you can manage. Alright, so why do I like this game? I like it because, you know, because of that customization, but also because of the, just the general conflict. It's, it's almost worker replacement-ish, but not really. Uh, it's more of an auction game. Almost. It's a weird game. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it sometimes. I mean, yeah, you're effect you're sort of bidding, but you have to meet just meet a certain minimum to even get it. And if you see someone working real hard to focus on something, you might end up giving up on that and going towards something else. Um, the whole hidden cards for uh, your close by districts idea is interesting. Um, the art style uh, is is interesting. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what to make of it sometimes, but it is it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is a f solid four-player game, 
and uh, I think it's out of print, but finding a copy shouldn't be too hard. Maybe. I'm not sure how much people are trying to, what other people are looking for for um, their copies. Um, I'm trying to think of it. What else? You know, it's 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 a decent game. I'm going to I'm going to give it a mostly positive because because of the customization, and it's not a stupidly long game that someone can just stretch out and to forever. There's no crazy combinations that do crazy things, so it's mostly restrained. Um, it's definitely a game I'm going to see. Uh, about playing in the board game league with, um, yeah, this, we're going to be starting the board game league next, um, next week. I'm not sure when this video is going to come up, but, uh, this is definitely one for a group of four players. But I need to wait until I get card sleeves, and, yeah, that's probably one downside is I'm going to have to sleeve every card. <laughs> and there's a lot of cards to sleeve. But yeah, I, I like it. I recommend it. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Pillar Nexus. We'll see you next time.